Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we are going to check out Quant's price chart and see what is going on in terms of Elliott Wave's classic technical analysis and also indicators. And we are going to see because we got this move up in the short term, can we actually be bullish and say the bottom is in? But before we see what is happening in the short term, let's check out the midterm scenario first and in terms of Elliott waves, if you want to argue that we're going to have our final bottom around this area and maybe this is going to be a very important support. Okay, off of the lowest low in here, you need to be able to find a 5 wave on the upside. This thing right here is a normal 5 wave. The rules for us are we shouldn't have overlapping of the waves between wave 2 and 4 and in any kind of impulsive structure. Wave 3 in here shouldn't be the smallest wave and 4 sub waves. You probably know it by now if you are a regular viewer. 5 up into wave 1, 3 and 5. Let's just draw the waves. There we go. And for wave 2 and 4, for our corrections, we can have different patterns. Maybe in this case, ABC down into 4 and AWXY as pressure into wave 2. Understood? Nice. Because we are now going to count some sub waves and see what is going on in this area. So here's the thing. This point right in here about, let's say, $40 is the lowest low in quant and off of it I do believe that we are actually having a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave on the upside however on a higher degree in my opinion there's a very very high chance that this 5 wave up is going to be into a larger degree A leg and then we are having in here a correction for wave B and after it another 5 wave up into our C leg so because we are having generally an ABC on the upside off of the lowest low and not an impulsive movement to me this means maybe at one point we're gonna get a move down in quant in order to set new lows and take the lowest low all the way down here about $40. But here's a very important point. This means, like we said earlier, at one point we're gonna get a move down. For example, we can have another huge move on the upside in order to at least take this high for the first target about, let's say, $225. And thereafter, we can get, fair enough, a move down in order to set new lows. Or maybe in another possibility, from the current point maybe even a bit higher we're going to get a move down and set new lows so which scenario is going to happen we cannot say anything for sure and there is no certainty in the market but for me i'm going to tell you what i actually like more and in my opinion if we go down and set new lows it will be much much better why because let's say we're going to get a huge move on the upside okay even in these high prices, I'm always going to keep setting new lows in QNT in the back of my mind, and I'm going to be very, very careful. On the other hand, let's say we're going to go down and set new lows, and then we're going to get a bounce back. Well, okay, if the right structures are going to be in here, at this point, I'm actually going to be extremely, extremely bullish because in these areas, we're not going to have any unfinished business, and I'm going to argue we are actually going to have a very strong upturn in order to potentially set an all-time high and take the highest high all the way up here about let's say 440 dollars so for me it's best to set new lows but the price doesn't really do what i want and it's got pretty much the mind of its own let's zoom in a bit more on h4 time frame and see what is going on if you remember the last time that we talked about quant we were saying in this area we can actually have a bullish scenario and it's going to be basically a series of one and twos meaning this can be one two and then let's put the end of our wave three four five in here and we said we can have another one and a two but on a lower degree and then we're gonna get a big move up into wave three four five in order to complete the sub waves for this larger degree wave three and then correction for another move up into wave five in the previous video we were saying this scenario can actually be in play and the invalidation point for it is going to be taking this low about let's say 57 and a half dollars so what happened? As you can see, we didn't actually continue this move down and we didn't take this low. Instead, we got a solid bounce back. Now, let's zoom in a bit more in here and maybe go on some lower time frames. There we go. You see, I still believe that this is, in terms of Elios waves, 5 wave down and this can actually be another 5 wave impulsive structure on the outside. But now I'm going to argue that on a higher degree, we're not actually going to have an impulsive structure. Instead, this is an A. B, C, zigzag. Now, this means at the moment we can actually go according to the bullish scenario. So you see, for now, in my opinion, it's actually safe to be bullish. Now, in this move on the upside, I think we are actually going to 
reach probably to somewhere around this area for the first target which the lower band of it is about 75 and a half and the higher band of it is about let's say 79 80 bucks so for now we can actually expect another 7 to even 10 percent move on the upside in q and t spreadsheet but right in here basically it's going to be the decision time and we are going to decide whether the bullish or the bearish scenario is going to be in play if we're going to have a bullish scenario okay what we need to see is actually some consolidation patterns and then another move on the upside in order to get back above this very very important level which we said earlier the higher band of it is about let's say 80 dollars on the other hand if the bearish scenario is going to be in play well okay then from this point we're not actually going to have a consolidation pattern and we're going to get a solid reaction in order to continue this move down right in here and if in this move we take this low about let's say 60 dollars at that point there will be pretty much no shot for us to be able to find an impulsive structure in this area and we are going to argue you know what this is just a correction of structure on the upside and not an impulsive movement and it means our move down is going to continue and in it we are going to take this low for the first target about let's say 50 dollars which at that point i think we might actually continue our move down and overall we're gonna set probably new lows and take the low slow right in here about 40 dollars so let's have a quick conclusion in my opinion in the short term this move up right in here is actually going to continue to where to somewhere around this very important level and then in here we are going to see are we going to get a consolidation and then after it, another move up or maybe we're going to get a solid rejection from the slope but for now in like very short term we can argue that this thing is actually going to continue for another maybe seven to ten percent now what is going on in terms of indicators let's zoom in a bit more first on weekly time frame okay as you can see we are having a buy signal in a stochastic rsi which is a good sign but it's not actually confirmed yet we need to wait until the end of the week and at that point if we're gonna have this thing fair enough it can be a bullish sign but for me it's not going to be enough because i want to see also a buy signal in macd in order to be bullish with quite a bit of confidence so in weekly time frame we are seeing some bullish signs but personally and again just personally for me it's not going to be enough and in daily chart what do we have okay this isn't actually that bad because we are having a buy signal in macd and stock rsi at the same time and in stock rsi pay attention to the fact that we are somewhere around the overpass region so you see this suggests soon we might actually get some sort of a move on the outside but because in terms of classic ta we're not around this very important area yet we can argue that maybe in the next couple of days this move up is going to continue a bit more and then in here we're going to see what is going to happen if we're going to have a correction and then another move up we are going to be very optimistic on the other hand if we're going to get a solid reaction well unfortunately that is going to be a bit of a difference so so i hope i explained everything well and you understood what is going on in q and t's price chart anyway if you found any value in my content, I would really appreciate if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and follow me on Twitter. And if you want more, maybe you want a complete analysis for your own specific crypto, or maybe you want to learn some solid TA in order to be able to make good money in the markets, you can become a member and ask me anything you want. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.